I've got some ground beef, I've got some blue cheese, and I've got some coarse ground black pepper. So today, I'm gonna to be making a pepper crusted blue cheese burger. So what I have is about a half a pound of 73% lean. I wanted that higher fat content in this because, well, I like it when I'm out there grilling. If you want, you could use a leaner grind, 80-20, you know, 90-10, anything you want. I just like the 73 in burgers a lot of the time. So what I'm gonna be adding to this is this. This is a mixture of two tablespoons of blue cheese crumbles and two tablespoons of finely diced onion. So we're just gonna add this to our ground beef and mix. Let's scrape everything out of there and we are just gonna mix. Gonna wanna get everything as incorporated as we can. There are gonna be some stragglers that won't wanna join the party, but we'll try and force them if we can. Now that's mixed about as well as I want to mix that. I don't wanna overwork this. I don't wanna compress it too much because we're still gonna have to form it into a patty. Let's do that right now. So here is our approximate half pound mixture of the blue cheese onion mixture in with that ground beef. Let's just make a patty. I'm not using any sort of ring mold or anything for this. I'm just gonna hand form this. We're actually gonna be searing this in cast iron and then finishing it probably a few minutes indirect. All right, there's our burger patty. It's time to get the pepper crusting on this. So what I have here is just a small plate with some coarse ground black pepper spread on it. Now, some people want to use really freshly cracked black pepper, you know, those big chunks like peppercorns that have just been broken down. I've always found when you have those that biting into those isn't always the most pleasant experience. So I like to use a little bit more of a ground pepper, but this is a coarse grind. So we're going to take our burger and just set it in there. And you can see the coating that we have on that of pepper. If we need to, shake a little more pepper in there. Take that around. And we're gonna set it in and get the other side crusted. Just like that. So now you have both sides of this burger crusted with that coarse ground black pepper. And now we're just gonna put it in the refrigerator for a couple hours before we head out to the Weber kettle, sear it in cast iron, finish it off. I think we'll top it with some bacon, good bun, maybe a little barbecue sauce. I'll see you out there in a couple hours. Okay, so I have the Vortex set up in the Weber kettle. The briquettes are about 90% of where I want them right now. The underlying layer is just blazing hot, as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get my cast iron pan on here and get it heating up. Close the little wing here. Get our cast iron pan on. All right, so as our cast iron pan's coming up to temperature, I'm gonna toast my bun in it. Does everybody hear my lovely Friday afternoon traffic going by? Someday I will live somewhere without traffic noise. Let's see how these are doing. Getting there a little bit more. Let's see. That looks good to me. That looks good. And let's get our bacon in our pan. I know at this point, if you've watched enough of my videos, I don't even need to say it, but I like my bacon floppy. So if this is your first time watching me cook bacon, it's not gonna be crisp. My term is AFS, acceptable floppy state. And that cast iron pan gets hot, as you can see. Remember, if it gets too hot, all we have to do, slide it off the fire. A lot of residual heat in here and a lot of great sizzle. This is actually a little too cooked for me. That's all right. Get my bacon off of here. Get our pan back over the coals. Get our burger in there to sear. See how we're doing here. Let's give this a turn. Count a few seconds, let that pan reheat. Gonna let that crust form on the other side and then we'll move it indirect. 
And when I say indirect, I mean indirect out of the pan. We're gonna move the burger onto the cooking grate, take the pan off the kettle, and put the lid on, and just cook it indirect. Probably gonna take about 10 or 15 minutes. Love that cast iron sizzle. You can see that blue cheese melting in there inside. This is gonna be a good burger. Okay, we're gonna move our burger indirect to the cooking grate now. Right there, nice and gentle. We're gonna take our cast iron pan off. All right, we're gonna get the lid on. Let it finish cooking. Okay, it's about 10 minutes, let's give it a check. I wanna take my burger to about 150. So let's see where we're at. Looks like we're gonna be probably close to 130, so I'm guessing another 10 minutes, maybe 15, but another 10 minutes should get us there. Got a little bit of separation here, so I'm gonna be careful that I don't lose that. But boy, this looks good. I just want to carefully give this a turn so we get the other side of the burger closer to the coals. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get the lid back on this. I think we've got another 10 minutes. We should be pretty close to done, if not done. All right, our second little 10 minutes is up. Let's give this a check. Let's see how we're doing temp-wise here. 148, 151.3. That's good enough for me. We are done. Let's get our burger off of here, get it inside, and have a taste. Looks good, doesn't it? Look at that color. See the bits of cheese coming out here? Oh. All right, here is our pepper crusted blue cheese burger. And the pepper crust is super apparent on this. It's almost like a bark. Little bits of cheese in there poking out, they've been melting. All right, let's start building this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this with a, a sauce that I've never tried before. I tasted it, it's really good, but I've never used it on anything. It's this Flaps 20 Texas pepper sauce. Uh, the company sent this to me to try, so I'm gonna give it a shot on a burger. I think it'll go well with this. So I am gonna just drizzle a little bit on top here. Not a lot, just a little bit. There we go. I'm partial to some marinated red peppers on top. And then our bacon. A little bit crispier than I normally like, but I can live with that. Then we're gonna top this. And there's our pepper crusted blue cheese burger. So let's cut this thing in half and see what we have inside. All right, let's see. Ooh, that looks good. Little bits of cheese in there. Oh, the blue cheese. This is gonna be good. All right, I am ready to taste. Here we go. Can you see that? All that blue cheese melted in there with those onions. Those diced up onions in the meat will just release their juice as they cook. So I'm hoping there's a nice cheese and onion flavor in this. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Blue cheese flavor just permeating the meat. Mmm. Mmm. Nice little punch of onion inside the meat. And let me tell you, that pepper crust is great on a burger. Pepper crusted burgers are one of the favorite burgers I've ever had when I've gone to restaurants and gotten them. I've made them a few times, but it's one of those things I have to make individually because I'm the only one in my family that likes those. Oh, so good. Mm. And I like that Flaps 20 sauce, that Texas pepper sauce on here, right along the top. Goes really well with that pepper crust. Now the bacon is good. It's always good. It's a little too crispy for my taste. That was my fault. But oddly enough, I think this could do without the bacon. That pepper crust on the burger really is enough, especially with the sauce and those marinated red peppers. I don't know that you have to have the bacon. I know that may sound like heresy, but I think this burger could do without it and stand alone. 
Now, I'm not someone who runs out and puts cheese on every burger. I like cheese on burgers. I don't love cheese on burgers. I actually prefer a burger to not have cheese and just have great flavor that you get from the meat, other toppings, bacon, things like that. But when you put that cheese inside, especially blue cheese, which has such a bite, it works so well because as I said, it permeates the meat. It's just everywhere in here. Mm. And I've done stuffed burgers before with cheese and other things in them. This isn't necessarily a stuffed burger. It's a blended burger. The cheese is blended right in with the meat. So it's everywhere in there, which I think really works well, especially with the blue cheese. You could do it also with things like cheddar, uh, pepper jack, I think it would work well. But there's something about the blue cheese and that bite that still comes through with the meat. It's not lost in it like other cheese would just melt and be a big cheeseburger. It's got an individual flavor in here, which is great. Mm. Pepper crusted, blue cheese burger, seared in a cast iron pan, finished indirect on the Weber kettle. That is a fine meal. Mm.